hi! Welcome to my first SAT biology video. Today we're going to start off with all the basics, so atoms, macromolecules, functional groups, all that good stuff. So we'll start off with atoms. Atoms are the fundamental units of the physical world, and they combine via chemical reactions and become molecules. Now if a molecule only has one type of atom, it is considered an element and not actually a molecule, and molecules with different types of atoms are known as compounds. Next, we're going to talk about organic chemistry, which is the chemistry of molecules with carbon. Any other type of molecule is known as an inorganic molecule, except for carbon dioxide, which is considered inorganic. Carbon is super common because it has four valence electrons. This allows carbon to gain or lose four electrons, and it can form up to four bonds. Now, the four important organic molecules or macromolecules we're going to talk about are proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acids. So each of these macromolecules are polymers, which are strings of repeated units known as monomers. We'll begin with proteins. Proteins are polymers made of amino acids. So in total, there are 20 types of amino acids, and they all contain a hydrogen, a carboxyl group, an amino group, and an R group. So the elements that make up a protein are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. Amino acids bond in a chain to form a protein, and they release a water molecule through this process known as dehydration synthesis. During dehydration synthesis, peptide bonds are formed, and that's what actually holds together this chain of amino acids. Peptide bonds are broken through hydrolysis when a water molecule is added. So hydro, you add the water molecule, lysis, you break something. Proteins can function as enzymes, hormones, channels, structure elements, carriers, and messengers. We're going to talk about almost all of these throughout the rest of the videos. Next, we're going to talk about carbohydrates. Their monomer is a saccharide, and they're made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, typically in a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. Examples of carbohydrates are glucose and fructose, and it's important to remember that they differ in the way that they are double bonded to the oxygen. Though monosaccharides are single saccharides, they're still known as carbohydrates, as well as polysaccharides, which are multiple monosaccharides, but both of them are labeled carbohydrates, not one being like an amino acid. It's just an amino acid, it's not a protein yet. This one, the monomer, is still labeled as a carbohydrate. So if you have two monosaccharides that are linked, they're called disaccharides. An example of disaccharides are maltose and sucrose. Maltose occurs when two glucose molecules are added together, and sucrose occurs when a glucose and a fructose are added together. Both of these have the same chemical composition of C12H22O11, and remember that this isn't C12H24O12 because they lose one H2O in the process. More than two monosaccharides linked together is called a polysaccharide. The three polysaccharides to remember are glycogen, starch, and cellulose. All are polymers of glucose, but they differ in the way that the glucose molecules are linked together. Each of their functions are also important to know. Glycogen is the form that animal cells for store glucose in. Starch is the form that plants store glucose in. And cellulose is a structural polysaccharide that makes up cell walls. The third macromolecule we're going to talk about are lipids. Lipids function as energy storage units and cell membrane components. Though it doesn't have a true monomer, lipids are made up of hydrocarbons, which are both hydrophobic and nonpolar. The three most common forms of lipids are triglycerides, phospholipids, and cholesterol. First, triglycerides is what we're going to talk about. They consist of three fatty acids bonded to a glycerol head, which is an alcohol with three carbons. This is how your body typically stores its fats. Next is your phospholipids. Structurally, these are almost identical to your triglycerides, except one of the fatty acids is changed to a phosphate group. The phosphate group is hydrophilic or polar, making phospholipids polar on one end and nonpolar on the other end. So polar on the head and then nonpolar at the tail. When the phospholipids interact with each other, the phosphate heads stay together and often form a double layer, and this is what makes up your cell membrane or your phospholipid bilayer. The next lipid we're going to talk about is cholesterol, which is made up of hydrocarbon rings and it is found in the cell membrane. All steroid hormones of the body are derived from cholesterol. Lastly, we're going to talk about nucleic acids, which include DNA and RNA. So 
First, we're going to talk about DNA, which is a double-stranded molecule that forms a double helix, and it is bound by hydrogen bonds and covalent bonds. Each strand is complementary to each other, and the monomer of a nucleo nucleic acid is called a nucleotide, and these are made up of a phosphate, sugar, and a nucleotide base. Now, the sugar that we're going to talk about is deoxyribose for DNA and ribose in RNA, and the sugar and phosphate together form the backbone. The four nucleotides found in DNA are adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine, and in RNA it's adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil instead of thymine. Remember that adenine and thymine will only bond with each other, and the same goes for cytosine and guanine. When adenine and thymine bind together, they form two hydrogen bonds, whereas with cytosine and guanine they form three hydrogen bonds, making it a stronger bond. The last molecule to discuss in this video is going to be RNA. RNA is single-stranded and replaces the thymine with the uracil, and like we said earlier, the sugar is made up of ribose instead of deoxyribose. RNA can also fold with the base pairs within itself, and that's how it forms the 3D structures, unlike DNA, which has the double helix to form the 3D structures with it. 